In the previous tutorial, we created the books table first of all, and then we created an authors table and a publishers table, and we related them together. To see how we related all those primary keys and foreign keys together, maybe look at the previous tutorial. Now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to create the kind of loan system to do with this uh, library. And to create loans, we have to really deal with members first of all. So I'm going to create a members table and I'm going to move these to one side and I'm going to uh, go to the create tab, click on table and I'm already into the table creation view or the uh, table design view and uh, the different types of fields I'm going to create in this members table is ID, the primary key, forename, surname, address, date of birth and email. So just like I did with the other tables, I'm going to get in here and just according to my naming convention, name it members underscore ID. That is an auto number, so that will take care of itself. And the auto numbers, you can see it there. It's very obvious because I've got this new in brackets there. Go on to the next field. It's the forename field. This is going to be a text field, so it's going to be forename. And click on the next field is a surname. That's going to be a text field as well, so a surname is the name on the field. The next field is an address and again this is just going to be a text field. You could, and you see it a lot of times in different databases where uh, the database administrator or designer will split the address up into lots of different fields like address 1, address 2, address 3. That's very easy and handy for mail merging and things like that where you can split the address onto different lines but for this example it's kind of overkill so I'm just going to keep it in one field. That's address. Click on the next field. It's date of birth. Uh, that's a date time field, so I'm just going to call this DOB. And lastly, I've got an email. Email will be a text field, and I'll just call it email. Now you'll notice there's no foreign keys in this field. Any of the relationships that I create with this members that I can foresee uh, will all be from this table or from the primary key field members ID to another table, so I don't need any foreign keys in this table. Um, I'm just going to save this table as members, all uppercase according to my naming convention. And lastly, I'm just going to add in some dummy data. So I'll just call it the usual Joe Blogs. And the address is for Talbot Green. The uh, date of birth, give him a reasonable date of birth, uh, 1980. And the address joe at blogs dot ie okay and I'll move off that record to input it into the table and that's that table done now the next two tables that I'm going to create are copies and loans and just to explain the rationale behind having a copies table I already have a books table and I'll show you that in this uh, relationships view uh, I already have books. Let me just add in. I'll just add in the actual uh, members table that I'm just after creating as well. I've already got a table books, but books in a library, really that books table is just to denote what the actual title of the book is. So for example, if I get a book and the title of the book is Artemis Fowl, I'm a library, I might get five copies of that book. So the actual book title is stored in the books table, but all of the different copies of that book are actually stored in the copies table. And it's important to make that differentiation in the library system because when a member comes to actually borrow a book, they don't borrow the actual title of the book. They borrow a specific copy of the book and they take that home with them. And that's very important because when they come back in and they drop it into a, a quick return box, uh, there's an ID on the actual book. We have to make sure that each individual copy can be traced back to an individual member who took it out. Otherwise, we, it would cause all sorts of confusion. So, I'm going to create a new table and I'm going to call it copies. And again, in my primary key, I'm going to have copy underscore ID that's what I'm going to call that. And I'm just going to have one other field in it, which is a foreign key to the books table. And so because it's a foreign key, it's going to be related to the primary key in the books table. And the primary key in the books table is a number, and I have to match like with like. So I have to create this field as a number field. 
and the field name is book underscore fk because it's a foreign key. Now, let me just save this table. I'll call it copies, and let's just insert some dummy data in here. Now, at the moment, in my books table, I only have one book, which is uh, it's, the title is called Artemis Fowl, and the book ID is one. So, really, I'm restricted to what different types of books I can have here. But with Artemis Fowl, I decided that I'm going to have five different copies of that book. And so I'm going to create them right here. This is copy number one, and it's of book number one, which is Artemis Fowl. This is copy number two, but it's of book number one, which is Artemis Fowl. Copy number three is also Artemis Fowl. Copy number four is also Artemis Fowl. And copy number five is Artemis Fowl as well. Now, if I had a separate book in the books table, and let me just put one in here for argument's sake, and let's call it Tara Road by and uh, with an ISBN of something different. The date published is some random date. And the author, now I don't have an author yet. I'll say it's published by the same publisher as Artemis Fowl, which is Gillen Macmillan. The author, the author, uh, I'll just say that it's written by Owen Colfer for the moment. That's fine. So I've got a separate book there. Um, book ID is two, and then back in the copies table, if I'm getting three copies of that book, well, I would just go two, two, two on three separate records. And so I've got eight books all together in my library system. Five of them are of Artemis Fowl, and three of them are the book Tara Road. That table is looking good, so I'm going to make a relationship between the books table and the book foreign key here in this copies table. So again, I need to close down those two different tables um, to make sure I can create a relationship between them. I'll add back in this copies table that I'm just after creating. And to create, and so just to create that relationship, I'm just gonna click and drag from the primary key of book ID over to the foreign key book underscore FK in the copies table. Click on Enforce Referential Integrity, click on Create, and that relationship is now there. So I can see again if I click on the datasheet view of books, show me all the copies of Artemis Fowl, click on the Expand Indicator, I can see there's five copies there. Click on the Expand Indicator of the Tarot Row record in the books table, and I can see I have got three records. If uh, this view will show me, yeah, three records in, uh, in the copies table. So that's great. Okay. And the last piece of the jigsaw with all of these different tables is I have to loan or I have to be able to loan copies to specific members. And the way I do that is I create a loans table. So I'm going to click on create table. I go into the table creation view. And again, last time around, this is a loans table. So loan underscore ID is my primary key field name. And the different types of fields I'm going to have in here, I'm going to have one called copy, which is going to be a foreign key, member, which is going to be a foreign key, the date that the book went out, the date expected when it's expected to be returned, and also the return date when it actually is returned. So uh, the copy foreign key, again, this is going to be related to the primary key field in the copies table. So it's going to be a number field. And, and so the name on that field is going to be copy underscore ID, FK for foreign key. That's fine. The next field is a member's foreign key, so that's going to be related to the primary key field in the members table, so it has to be a number field. And so that's going to be called member underscore FK for foreign key. And the next field is going to be date out, so that's going to be a date and time field. And we'll call it date out. And again, I'm using camel case for all of these different um, field names based on the naming convention that I'm using. Uh, the next field is a date and time as well. It's going to be date expected. So that's the expected return date of the copy. And then lastly, the return date, the actual return date. I don't know what happened there. Excuse me. I might just uh, delete that field and try again. Uh, it's uh, date and time. And so return date is that field name. 
those are all the different fields that I'm going to put into the loans table for the moment. You could do more, but for this example, that's fine. And uh, I'm going to click on the Save This Get, and I'm going to call this Table Loans. Click OK, and that table is created. But again, I've got two foreign keys there, which would expect a relationship to be put into them. So I need to close that table down, add in the uh, Loans table, Loans. Uh, to try and get a little bit more space here so I can see what's going on a little bit more easily. That's fine. Members will be over here. And uh, I'll just adjust that slightly. I'll just copy slightly. That's wider than it needs to be. Slot loans in between them there because that's where I expect it to be. And again, I've got copy underscore, that's a foreign key, the member underscore foreign key as well. They will be related to each of the different primary keys in their respective different tables. So copy underscore ID will go to the copy foreign key, enforce referential integrity and create. And members underscore ID will go to the members underscore foreign key, enforce referential integrity and create. And they all work very well as well. So that's really good. And now I should really go back into the loans table and just fill it in with just one loan as a dummy data to show you how it would work. And before I do that, just I'm going to check I've got a member there called Joe Blogs. That's fine. And let's just decide what book Joe Blogs is going to take out. So he's going to take out copy number four of the Artemis Fowl book. That's what he's going to do. So let's go in and create that loan record. So loan ID will just uniquely identify each of the different records, so that's fine, it, and it's an auto number, so it will take care of itself. The copy number we said is copy number four, which if we check back in the copies table, would say that it belongs to uh, the one book, which is Artemis Fowl. The member ID is Joe Bloggs. He is a member ID of just one. The date out, we'll say, is today. Uh, the date expected, we will say, is roughly two weeks from now. And the actual return date for the moment is unknown because we're just creating this this loan record. Uh, it has yet uh, to be seen when Joe will return this book. And click off that just to insert that record. But we can see that all of those different records and datas, they all slot into each other very, very easily. If any of these, uh, the different data that I was trying to put in there, the data sheet view of the different tables, if they had a problem, if they didn't match up with the different dates and the different tables, you would very quickly get alerts because of this enforced referential integrity in all the different tables. But that's a very, very simple library system set up using Access 2010. Uh, in the next tutorial, I'm going to give you an example of a slightly different type of relationship than the one that we see there. Rather than have all one to many relationships, there are other types of relationships as well, one of which is many to many relationships. And that's what I'm going to do in the next tutorial.